and I'm Deontay B. And welcome to Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. Hey, lady. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I'm excited about this show because today we are talking about recipes, sweetest ingredients. And you know, when you think about that, you automatically think about food. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you, when you talk about recipe sweetest ingredients, everything you do has to have a recipe and the sweetest ingredients. Even when it comes to Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. Yes. You know, because it's not just us being up here with the guests. You know, we have all the ingredients to the show. We have a production team that you go down and listen. They are just so amazing. Yes. But aside of that, when you think about it, what do you think are the ingredients to success? So, you know, just from my experience, the things I think that are very important when you think about setting goals and determining whether you want to be successful at whatever you want to be successful at, um, it's three things th that are key to me. Right. So, one of the things is having faith. You know, in order to achieve it, you definitely have to believe it. And so, you have to have, like, super-duper faith, right? Um, the second thing would be consistency. Right? Because a lot of times why people can't succeed at what they're trying to do is because they they don't know how to be consistent right. in the things that they're trying to achieve. So consistency is a, a great ingredient that a lot of people fail to do in when they're trying to be successful. And then the last thing is sacrifice. Oh, yes, definitely. Yes. So you got to know that you're going to have to sacrifice in order to reach your goals and to actually become successful. So, yes, faith, consistency, and sacrifice are definitely three ingredients that are needed, in my opinion, to be successful. Absolutely. So today we're talking to two women who I think... It looks like they're doing those things. So our, we got Shaquita Smith. She's an actress, a director, and a producer. That's yes. your neck of the field. I know. I <laughs> love it. I love it. And, you know, also, we got the business. You know, when you think about the business, you got to think about Gwenetta. So we have, I'm excited about this guest. Her name is Kelly Perrell, and she's an author. And also, she is the owner of Nana's Chicken and Waffles. And you know, when you own a restaurant, you know, that's ingredients all the way around. Right. So, I mean, this is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And we're just getting started. We want you to learn all the ingredients to success. So stay tuned. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. With virtual and in-office tax preparation from Expert Tax Service, you can file your tax return anytime, anywhere. Expert Tax Service makes it easy. Just log on to experttaxservices.com to get started. Our tax professionals will work with you to make filing your taxes simple, no matter where you are. Expert Tax Service. We're here for you at our offices in Columbus and Stone Mountain or online nationwide at experttaxservices.com. Log on and get started today. Hi, I'm Deontay B of Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And you can catch us every first and third Monday on Fox 54. If you would like to be a show guest, contact us on Facebook at Gwen's Business Corner or you can email us at GwenBusinessCorner at gmail.com. <laughs> so welcome back. Today we're talking about the recipes and the ingredients to being successful and business. And our first guest is Mrs. Shaquita Smith. Hey, lady. Hey, how are you guys Hi. doing? We're Good. doing great. Welcome to the corner. Yes. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to jump right into it. So you're an actress, a producer, and a director. I am, yes. So what was the inspiration to go into that field? You know, honestly, my inspiration has come from me having a God-given talent. I love just, you know, inspiring others, but also just dabbling my creativity in, in the world. And on and off camera, I enjoy just seeing what other people have to offer, but also just giving them the opportunity to see what I have to offer as well. Okay. Yes. So I want to take you back to when you first started out, and especially with you being, you know, in so many different areas. Yes. So what were some of the challenges that you faced playing both sides of the field, being an actress and then on the producer and director uh, side? That mm -hmm. is a good question. <laughs> being a boss. Yes. <laughs> um, because I, the, the challenge is basically being yourself okay. and knowing yourself and knowing exactly what you want. And that could be a challenge when you have your team because you have to trust your team. Right. 
to, you know, uh, tell you exactly what they want, but also stay true to what you want as well, because God gave you the ability to have your own creativity, and your own vision. You have to stick with that. And I think that what makes you unique. And I think that's part of being, you know, the challenges that you make as being a creator, but also creating your work and being on set as well. So that is the biggest challenge. Whatsoever. I can see that. that right. I think that's with anything, especially when it comes to business, because, you know, especially if God gives you a vision and mm -hmm. you don't really want to bear off it too much because you know what he showed you. Then you got everybody around you seeing something some another way and right. then just really trying to, like you said, stay true to yourself. I, I like that and I get that. That right. is definitely a challenge. Right. Um, so tell the viewers, like, what is the difference? Because a lot of people don't know right. between a director and a producer. Yes, that's a good question. Um, being a director is basically you telling the story visually. Um, being a producer is you creating the whole entire filmmaking world, meaning the budget to cast to crew. You're creating the, the, every little piece to make this project a success. From a director standpoint, you're visually telling the story the way that you want to tell the story. And that's the difference between both roles. Me, I love producing because I'm able to put all the pieces together and to say, you know what, I want this particular director because they have this vision of me wanting a thriller aspect or um, I want with this particular budget I can only do so much so I think from a from a company standpoint I look at it from that perspective saying hey I have the you know the tools to create my own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so you know so many people you know they want to get into entertainment they want to be an actress they want to be a director or a producer but they don't know where to start Right, right. So what were some of the steps that you took, have taken in building some of these opportunities? Being on Broken Scales, oh, Tyler yeah. Perry is Loving You is Wrong, just right. to name a few. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the steps that you have taken to build these opportunities? And to set yourself aside from all of the other people that are casting for these roles. Right. Well, Broken Scales, I'm actually shooting that in May. So I, I got cast for that um, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, setting myself apart is building relationships. I think a lot of times people want to get the opportunities, but you're bypassing just being a great person and building that relationship because you never know where your opportunity is going to come from. It may be this month or for the next few months down the line. Right. Also, doing the work, right. you bypass, you know, trying to get opportunities, but you didn't do the work. Exactly. You got to go study. You got to do script analysis. You got to do all these things to be a great, a great actor, great actress, but also have the business ethic along with it. And even when you become a, a, a great person or, or being a a great person. People see that right. on Instagram, on social media, and when you align that with work, then you you you're a star anyway. So I definitely think it's it's those those ingredients to becoming you know an actress and continually to get more opportunities. Yeah, those were key nuggets, viewers, because she said something that I think a lot of people don't understand. We look at different people and what they're doing out there, and then we think that we can go mimic what they're doing to get in the doors they got into. Right. But if you do those two things, be a good person and then work hard, you don't have to worry about going to chase something. It's going to chase you automatically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I love exactly. that. So off camera, you do motivation and speaking. Yes. So tell us, why do you feel like that's important? And what are some of those topics that you talk about as a motivational speaker? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> um, as an entertainer, you know, especially me, um, you always want to be inspired by people that's doing what you want to do. And for me as a, as a speaker, I, I look at topics that, okay, if I was sitting out in the audience, what do I want to hear? What is something that I could take with me into my next level or the journey that I'm, 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 I'm going in my career? And some of the topics is, you know, uh, staying prayed up, being faithful, um, not taking a no for an answer because there's so many routes to go. Um, and, and I'm a big believer and strong believer in that. It's that, okay, that door closed, but it's another one that's around the corner that I can open. And that's the that's the mindset that that I have. I I believe that if you continually to do that, then everything will, you know, will be all right. But definitely think that if you from a motivational speaking um, aspect is that you have to look at people like say for instance, one of my idols is um, Angela Bassett, Denzel Washington. And I look at the things that they say and I look at, you know, the, the, the progress that they made and I want to continually to, to say, okay, this, these are the steps that they did. Let me see how I can adapt to, to that with my own spin on it. Right. And that's what, that's what I do.
That's amazing because, you know, you, you think about that when you're listening and something that she said that really that I really took really hope the viewers take heed to is giving something that the viewers the people there need to hear right. because that's why this show was created because right. we went to we've been listening to people that that consider themselves motivational speakers and we did not hear those things the motiva- and know? being real and you need that you right. got to be real when it comes to motivational speaking I think if you continually to be real and be honest with somebody then they'll resonate more than being like, oh, well, you know what? I think you need to be great. I need you to be right. good. No, right. let me tell no you a real either. deal. Yeah, you don't need okay. no trouble either. You, you know. need somebody to be real funky with you and be like, okay, this was hard, but this is how I got over this. Exactly. Right. I was wrong, exactly. but this is how I got over there. Okay. I hit the ground about 15 times, but I got back up. Right, right, right. So, yeah, definitely. So what advice would you give to actress and actors that are looking to find the actual talent representation because we know so many people out there, you know, they don't have that representation. They Mm -hmm. don't even know how important it is to be cast or to have roles. So what advice would you give to those people? Well, I'll go back to one thing is to, you know, continually to work on your craft. That's one thing because talent agencies are going to be at acting classes. They're going to be, you know, um, out at networking events. But in order for people to see your worth, you have to have talent. You have to have the package. You have, you also have to be humble as well. So even finding a talent representation is basically going to the basics. These acting classes, like I said, the networking events, the, um, you know, going to seminars, different things of that nature. But right. they're not going to know unless you show them them and then another thing social media oh it's so many people that have been found on social media based off them putting out their work and and um i've I've gotten opportunities based off that it's like you know what i want to be an action star let me put that out there and see what comes back and 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 it happens just like that technology is ruling our world everybody (laughs) and and i think that's you know that's it's so many ways to, to get talent talent representation so absolutely yes so what is some advice that you would give someone? Because I think it's hard out here to be an actress after. Deontay has done it, so I've watched the role of things that she has to do. Mm-hmm. So what are some advice would you give to someone to stay relevant as an actress to mm-hmm. make sure they're consistently being able to get roles? I would have to say, like one, like I said, building relationships. That's that's number one. Um, you know, a lot of times you want it now, but sometimes your opportunities come from waiting. You know, I, I know that God always say you have to wait for for your blessings, bigger blessings. Um, that's one thing. But also, too, is being relevant, meaning putting great work out there, looking out in the society, looking out the community and being like, OK, what do I have that I can I can sprinkle out into the world? And that's what I do. What African-American black woman can I be that people haven't seen? Oh, let me be action star. No one has seen that. Oh, right. let me be this 90 year old woman, Wh- whatever the case may be. I look at things and I want people to see me as the person that you didn't technically see a black woman do. Mm. And that's, you know, from producing or uh, from directing, what from a director, directorial debut, can I, can I, what, what, what work can I put out there? Right. And that's what makes me relevant. That's what makes me, and then also blessing others too. Blessing others with producing and directing, giving other people opportunities. So not only are you, um, you know, being great, having great work, you know, in front of the camera, but you're also blessing others um, off the camera as well. And that for me is is the whole package. And also looking at, okay, what else can I do? And putting, you know, like a planner together and saying, you, you, you tackle this, what else can I tackle? You know, and that's, for me, that's success. Hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amazing. So lastly, tell the viewers how they can find you. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You can find me on Instagram, Shaquita underscore official, and also Twitter at Real Shaquita. Yes, I will say dot com, but no. <laughs> um, Real Shaquita and also my website, www.shaquitasmith.com. And please check out Broken Scales that's coming out where I'm playing like a, a, a police officer. So I'm excited yeah. about that. Well, thank you for coming down. Great advice. You're welcome. Yes, thank you guys yes. for having me. And good luck on all your new projects. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. We are giving you all the key ingredients to being successful in business and entertainment. This is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And coming up next, we have the Kelly Farrell, owner of 
Nana's Chicken and Waffles. Stay tuned. Keep a lot. We'll be right back. Be right back. <laughs> We at Gwen's Business Corner would like to thank our proud sponsors, Expert Tax Service LLC and Pretty Boss Hair. And you can watch Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay V every first and third Monday on Fox 54. I am Deontay V. With virtual and in-office tax preparation from Expert Tax Service, you can file your tax return anytime, anywhere. Expert Tax Service makes it easy. Just log on to experttaxservices.com to get started. Our tax professionals will work with you to make filing your taxes simple, no matter where you are. Expert Tax Service. We're here for you at our offices in Columbus and Stone Mountain or online nationwide at experttaxservices.com. Log on and get started today. Hi, I'm Deontay V of Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And you can catch us every first and third Monday on Fox 54. If you would like to be a show guest, contact us on Facebook at Gwen's Business Corner or you can email us at GwenBusinessCorner at gmail.com. Welcome back. So if you're just tuning in, we are talking about the greatest ingredients to success. And we have with us Kelly Farrell of Nana's Chicken and Waffles. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here. Oh, yes. people love chicken and waffles, hon. Yes, yes, yes. And so do <laughs> they we. Do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. <laughs> so tell us. Let's jump right into it. Awesome. How did you, uh, what was your inspiration in even starting a chicken and waffle restaurant? And what were some of the stuff that you took to develop it? Um, well, just to get started, we actually started the restaurant on a vision board. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So my restaurant mm -hmm. was created on a vision board, my husband and I. Um, one day, you know, one night we just went on together and did a vision board. I've always done vision boards. He has never done a vision board. Of course, I did his whole board. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, but we created on a vision board. We had always decided that we wanted to implement family recipes um, into one. We felt like it was... We were uh, living in Conyers and we said, you know, it's no breakfast restaurants out mm -hmm. here. We would always drive to the city just to kind of get something that was good home cook. You know, we really didn't want to kind of eat at the franchises. Um, so that's how it happened. We put it on a vision board, put a lot of things on the vision board, but we put that on there and literally from there that year we actually opened Nana's Chicken and Waffles. Mm, wow. I like two things about that. One, because you had a vision and you wrote it yes. down. So you write the vision, make it plain. Absolutely. So that's important. Yes. And then the second part about it is, is you know, when you're going in business, you find a solution to a problem. And you yes. buy y'all opening the restaurant because people are always looking for some home-cooked breakfast. Yes. yes. I love yes. it. Yes. yes. So it's been amazing, though. Okay. It has been amazing. Yes, and we definitely believe in vision boards. Yes. Like, and so many people out there need to start making vision boards with because it's so so many people do not do vision boards they and do. you they know need it to. really happens people yeah. don't think that if making a vision board that that can really come to fruition but you can look at it every day and you can actually see it and then yes. obtain it and you're living proof that that can and happen. it makes you change your day-to-day -day activities because when you're looking at your board it makes you change the way that you even just kind of go through life you know your decision making I mean, it just helps you to really get to that point of where you are really trying to be. When you visually see it, you think different, you act different. Um, you know, you visually see yourself in another place and it really does help you to get to where you need to be. Exactly. Yeah. So, so many people out there, you know, they want to have a restaurant, people that mm -hmm. are cooking in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, they have these great recipes yes. and, you know, I can cook and they, you know, they don't know where to start. They want to yes. be a restaurant owner, but it's so much more to it than just saying, I want to <laughs> open a restaurant. So I want you to tell the viewers, what are some of the challenges that you face as a restaurant owner, especially in the beginning stages? Oh my God. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just like any other business, you know what I mean? Um, I wasn't a classically trained chef and neither, neither was my husband. Okay. Um, so cooking, of course, has always been a passion, but I didn't, I didn't go to school for that. I, you know, that wasn't supposed to be my profession. Um, it's one of those things, but, um, when you talk about challenges, I mean, we face them every single day and right. from the start to the beginning, you really have to educate, educate yourself on what it is that you want to do any type of business. I've always been an entrepreneur. But again, having a restaurant is completely different from any other business that I've ever had. Right. Um, you know, it's daily operations. I have I run my business. 
Um, and I would tell anyone else that wants to open a restaurant, and of course it's great that you can cook, but you have to really learn how to work your business from every aspect and every detail. So I have been a cashier, I've been a server, I've been a dishwasher, I've cleaned <laughs> the toilets, I've cooked, right. um, I've taken orders. It, it, it's more about it than cooking because there's so many more aspects, it's a village that keeps that restaurant running from, from you know the dishwasher to the lead cook, to the cashier, to the server, to the host. Every one of those um, components are very important. Not one is better than the other. Right. Um, and that's really what you have to learn in order for that, for any business to succeed, really. Um, but yes, the, you know, the restaurant business, is, it's tough, but I love it. You know, it's an, it's an event every single day. Um, you meet new people every single day and okay. you're feeding people with love um, from what it is that you wanna, that you wanna give, so. It's been exactly. great, but of course I went to YouTube University and Google, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, it was a lot of people that didn't really want to help me when I started my restaurant. Mm. You know, being a woman, being a black woman, um, I didn't get that much help. So I really had to learn how to educate myself, make sure that I hired people um, who's been in the industry who could give me tips. Um, and most importantly, I had to get in there and I had to work. Right. Um, and it, it, you know, every single day you learn something new. We've been in business for three years, I'm still learning. You know, so I, I'll never stop. You know, it's one right. of those things where you have to, the moment that you stop learning is the moment that you stay complacent. Um, so I always want to make sure that I'm constantly updating myself on new rules, new procedures, health codes, health violations, um, new products. You know, right. what can make us run better? What can make the product better? Um, so, well said. yes. Yes. So, <laughs> so you took it a step further. You didn't just have a starter restaurant. You decided that you want to write about cooking. And yeah. so you have a book, Cooking with Kelly. I do. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about your book and also tell us maybe about one of your recipes. Okay. So, because I, I need to help you out with learning how to cook. Yes, girl. I don't have. I have. <laughs> yes. You know. It's I'm okay. Sad, I'm sad to say. It's okay. It's okay. You know what? I made my book for people, for women like you, okay. for, for men like you. Um, it's one of those things where, number one, I wanted to do a cookbook because I always wanted to implement family recipes. We always get so many questions about, well, how do you make this and what goes in that and how does that go? So I said, you know what? I want to be the first person in my family to write a cookbook, and that's mm. what I did. So I was the first person in my family to be an author. Super excited about that. Um, and I wanted to do a cookbook that was easily accessible, right? Mm. Again, I'm not a classically trained chef, so I don't, you know, when it comes to certain techniques, I know how to do them. I've, you know, I've been on Food Network a few times, so I've learned some different techniques. However, I wanted to do something that was easy. It was pantry, pantry um, friendly ingredients where you don't have to go out and you don't have to go here and try to find this and trying to find that. It was something that if you could, you know, if you're home and you of course have something good in the pantry, you should be able to kind of use one of those and kind of come up with some of the amazing recipes. So okay. um, just pull it out so you guys yes. can see. <laughs> um, and the book comes in a box. Oh, oh wow. Um, I wanted to make sure that the book was a representation of me. Um, my, my degree was in fashion merchandising and design. Mm. So I wanted to make sure that um, it was an experience when you opened up the book. It wasn't just a cookbook, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like I most it. of the cookbooks are just Look at I'm this. I'm not going to say boring, Hi. but. <laughs> yes. yes. So this is a book. And of course, I just wanted it to be an experience. You know, like when you get in the kitchen, I want you to feel good. I want it to be fun. You know, get your glass of wine, turn oh, on some I music. Love it. Oh, um, that is amazing. And, and really just kind of have fun with it. You know mm. what I mean? So, and I cook a lot with my girls. I have five daughters. And I cook a lot with my girls, and I wanted it to be just really fun, simple, and easy. And it's really, it's it's family recipes, it's recipes that I've created, um, recipes from my family that I, you know, passed down from generations. Um, and just really fun, simple, and easy. I love it. Yeah. And that is still that hard back book that, yes. you know, people don't, <laughs> like the whole, just the whole setup, like you just. The packaging is, is, is absolutely amazing. Thank you. And I don't think, I know, I'm, I'm coming off such a but. We had to teach y'all something. Yeah. <laughs> she said she said it how it's supposed to be said. Right. She wanted her book to represent her. And so when you are 
building something or putting a product or service out in the world, you got to make sure that with that branding, it's actually representing you. Yes. And this is something I would do definitely yes. because it would be one, you get an experience and then two, it's so elegant. And I, Thank I you. just love it. I love Thank it. Thank you so much. All the way down you. to the tissue paper. <laughs> and it's branded. And it's branded. And it's branded. And it's just. Yeah. It's just the best cookbook that thank I've seen you. as far as presenting it. So thank you. Amazing. I appreciate it. Well, definitely thank you for coming to join us on the corner and gracing us with so those such wonderful recipes. Thank and we, you. We just want to wish you luck on Nana's Chicken and Waffles and everything that you have going on. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I thank you. It. So coming up next, we're going to get into letting mm -hmm. you know what's going on with Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B as we close out the season because we are coming to a close. Stay tuned. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. This is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. With virtual and in-office tax preparation from Expert Tax Service, you can file your tax return anytime, anywhere. Expert Tax Service makes it easy. Just log on to experttaxservices.com to get started. Our tax professionals will work with you to make filing your taxes simple, no matter where you are. Expert Tax Service. We're here for you at our offices in Columbus and Stone Mountain or online nationwide at experttaxservices.com. Log on and get started today. Hi, I'm Deontay B of Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. And you can catch us every first and third Monday on Fox 54. If you would like to be a show guest, contact us on Facebook at Gwen's Business Corner or you can email us at GwenBusinessCorner at gmail.com. Welcome back. So if you're just tuning in, we were talking about the ingredients to success. And I mean, our guests today, they were just amazing. They was. They was really great. They was very informative. Um, I think both of them really um, gave the great information about what it takes to actually be successful, especially in the, both the areas that they are in. But the information that they provided today was great information, I think, that anybody can utilize in their businesses. And I also think the challenges that they talked about right. are definitely challenges that people go through in their business. So they did an amazing job. I enjoyed today's show. I did, and you may even learn how to cook. Oh, girl, yes, I'm going to go try. Okay, 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 okay. That's one of my goals for the year. Okay, y'all, so y'all know it's still tax season. We got 11 more days before the deadline ends. So make sure if you're doing last-minute tax filing, check us out at Expert Tax Service. You can go online, submit your information at www.expertaxservices.com. You know, my name is Gwinnetta Wright. If you're looking for me, you can find me at Gwinnetta Wright on all social media outlets. And also, make sure you're following Gwen Business Corner on all social media outlets as well. And you can go to our website at www.gwenbusinesscorner.com. Deontay, tell me how to find you. Well, you can find me at all social media outlets at The Real Deontay B. And I mean, we've given you the keys to success, but you know, we are just getting into the year and it is flying, flying, flying. You're just in time for spring and we want you to have all those ingredients so that you can be the next big star or the next big business owner. This is Gwen's Business Corner with Deontay B. See you next time. Peace. Peace.